Hey everyone, welcome to Cisco Live Amsterdam. Uh, my name is Matt DiNapoli, and I'm here with Frank Brockners, uh, who is a distinguished engineer and technical lead with uh, Emerging Technologies and Incubations. And we're here to talk about edge native technologies, or edge native as a concept. Frank, thanks for joining us here. Thank you, <laughs> my pleasure. So um, just conceptually, so everyone gets a groundwork for what we're talking about, can you explain how you see edge native? Well, Edge Native, I think, is a concept that allows us to go and preserve the cloud native principles, development experience, deployment experience, and bring that to the edge so that a developer or an IT ops person can almost, like, with very minimal learning, can go and start to deploy applications at thousands of locations very, very easily, maintaining the cloud experience. And I think that's really, like, we've seen this, this pendulum swing from everything on-prem to everything going to the cloud, maybe 2015. Mm -hmm. And then certain people found like, ah, yeah, well, then you go and come back from uh, the cloud for certain reasons like latency reasons, sometimes cost reasons, security reasons, policy reasons. And that's where th the pendulum swings back. People want to go and preserve the cloud experience for simplicity reasons, for fast deployment reasons, so that we are not starting over again like, oh yeah, it's Edge, and now we have to go and reinvent everything again. <laughs> no, 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 we don't want to retrain ourselves. We want to use what we have. Um, you actually answered my second question, so thank you for doing that oh. for me. No, that's totally <laughs> fine. Um, so uh, can you talk about what Cisco is doing to kind of influence the adoption of the concepts of Edge Native? Oh, multiple. I think the first and the biggest thing is we build a platform. Oh. Okay. We, we actually build a solution that um, allows us to, well, not only explain the concept, but showcase it and get it into your, your hands as a customer, right? Uh, right now, we're in the, an early phase. We're working with what we call design partners. Cisco historically called this early field trial, oh, field EFT. Trial mm -hmm. um, these days, we call it design partners, where we're jointly designing the solution, maturing it. And we're in that particular phase where we are still like fiddling out and kind of making it a little like smoother and more of a, of a perfect solution. But yeah, that's the first thing that we, we obviously do. We, we didn't only pioneer the concept, we created a solution. And on top of that, we are obviously working with the industry, with the communities to go and explain it. Like, so I've done a, a, done a bit of a shopping tour across multiple open source conferences, mm -hmm. industry forums, where we started doing explain like, what is edge native? How does it differentiate from cloud native? Um, why do we need it? And what does it solve? So uh, from what I understand, and I'm, I'm coming in a little bit new to this, uh, the, the, the concept is, is that we put devices on the edge and allow for the compute architecture to to live at the edge and not necessarily in a central place or the cloud um, specifically. Uh, what kind of devices are we looking at that people could potentially use for their edge native experience? Mm -hmm. Very good question. Because um, most of these devices are indeed relatively small mm -hmm. and that's our starting point. And um, let me explain you why. Okay. So how edge actually appeared was very much as, a, as an evolution of the cloud. So like you start in the cloud and then you need stuff on-prem. What do you do? You try to extend the cloud a little <laughs> further. Like you, you, instead of putting the rack into the data center, you put the rack further out on-prem. And then you operate the rack as if it would be in the data center. That means you establish decent connectivity, you run a tunnel, and then you really remote control the cluster that sits out there. It's okay if you have a load of bandwidth, if it's all stable, if the edge is always on, if it doesn't move, if the edge is not on a car or on a truck that moves into a tunnel and then <laughs> loses connectivity, that's all fine. And if the edge indeed fits onto a truck. There you go. That's sometimes what, that's you might not even statement. have the space, yeah, yeah. right? Because <laughs> what we found is like there's loads of retail stores, mm -hmm. um, shop floors on a, on a production line, um, warehouses, yeah. Or even your favorite coffee shop next door, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think they have space for a rack? I don't think Rather, they do. right? <laughs> so they want something small. They want something like, well, brick size yeah. um, that they can go and fit. And that's what our starting point was where we say, well, um, we need a solution that fits these deployment environments. Mm -hmm. And these deployments, our environments are not only like space constrained or power constrained, 
they also don't really have IT staff on site where you right. can say, well, I can go and maintain the solution immediately. If, it, if, it's fix it, if it's broken, like the only thing that we can go and tell the people is power cycle, yeah. hit factory reset. <laughs> That's fingers, about it. Fingers right? crossed that it's going to work, right? Further than that, you don't debug. You don't cube cuddle to a cluster at the edge. No, no. The operational principle, it needs to be easy. And if it fails, you start over. Yeah. Rather than you try to go and debug the whole thing or have somebody SSH to your device. Have you ever seen Apple SSH to your smartphone in <laughs> no. order to fix it? Never, ever, <laughs> no, right? No, so no. the operational principle that we have is really that of what, what smartphones are today. Very simple to operate um, and at very remote and small locations. And um, one thing with a, with a compute unit, right? Um, it might well be that one small compute unit is not enough. Mm -hmm. Typically, what classic edge solutions are, they're vertically integrated. So you have the compute node with software, with application code, all vertically integrated, and then you ship the node. What we do is slightly different, right? Because we say, well, many applications at the edge, and then you need generic compute. And that means like, if you have one box that isn't cutting it, you put another box or another box and another box and we cluster this and make it transparent to the application that, well, you need more compute, we add a compute node, but the application will not even notice that it's running on multiple devices. So we can scale horizontally wow. within a site and we can scale horizontally across sites because all these sites are autonomous in their behavior and they yeah. just reach out to the cloud in order to go and get their desired state. So they reach out to the cloud and say, well, what should I go and do? And then they pull it from the cloud and then realize it locally. And that, that could mean like I reach out to you, you, and you in order to go and get my state, realize it locally, download the application. That could all be like arranged locally. And then only every now and then I check back and say, well, what do I need to do now, right? Other than you telling me all the time, do this, do this, do this. Yeah. That would consume a load of energy on your end. You know, if, I, if I run this, it hardly needs any energy on your end, right? Because you just say, well, Frank, do this, and then maybe in six months I come back and say, well, I did it, or maybe in two seconds I come back and right. I say, I did it. It's, um, it's, you know, now I'm just realizing that could potentially shift the paradigm of how we design applications, how we think oh, yeah. about compute, how we think Big about time. using compute services. Big time. And it can open a whole door to. It, it requires a, new world, a little frankly. bit of rethinking on how you run applications, yeah. right? For instance, so some of the, the original cloud native principles still are still true. Of course. Like one of the main principles was decouple the code from the data. So whatever you run at some location, make sure that you can go and have as many processes as you need and then fetch the data and store and, and persist the data somewhere else. The same is true for edge now, right? Mm -hmm. um, don't persist data at the edge because all these locations can go and fail any point in time. Right. So don't run a database at the edge. You can cache data at the edge. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But make sure that your master print is always up in the cloud. We can cache and like, if you have no connectivity, I'm sending it up to the cloud at one point when I have connectivity. But don't really go and design the applications where they suddenly have to go and run persistent storage with a database and all that stuff at the edge. That would break that principle. Yes. Which means, like in certain cases, yes, you have to rethink how you do things. Mm -hmm. But if you're cloud native, you already rethought the things. Okay. But I can't really solve your core problem if you have a, a solution that runs on Windows 98. <laughs> it's a completely monolithic application, right. um, which doesn't really adhere to cloud native principles. Then it's a step function. That's mm -hmm. true. But we see, like, if we build something new today, we want to build something modern. And I do believe we built something really modern. Yeah. And you're modularizing our applications, you're modularizing our data, and making it so that um, we can solve problems in a new way that we might have been limited before in the past because we either had to worry about it being fully cloud dispersed or fully on premise. Yeah. And it, it sounds like it's actually giving us an opportunity. I know we've talked about hybrid cloud for a long time, and, and there are, organizationally, it sounds like something that can be adopted um, relatively easily in the mindset of, a, of an organization, but it's not always in practice the easiest thing. And it sounds like we're actually working towards making it easier to adopt the concepts of hybrid cloud, but even further than the path of on-premise and public cloud, but to really exactly. getting it into the, Very much the so. true edge. Very much so, right? Okay. Because that means, hybrid always means like, I'm doing certain things in the optimal location. Mm -hmm. I want to do certain things in the cloud, persist data long term, I do this in the cloud. Cache data locally for resiliency purposes to not lose data, right? One, one use case that we have is where 
for labor law reasons, the employer has to prove that people take their break times. What okay. do they do? They monitor the break room 24 seven so that, well, they can prove in a court trial or whatever, like <laughs> the guy took his break, come yeah. and sue me. What do you need for that? You need footage from that break room 24 seven that is reliable. Right. But what you don't need is you don't need a HD stream from the room all the time. You need one picture maybe every second, right. that's sufficient. So you need to ingest the video. You want to cache because every now and then the uplink to S3 storage might not work. And so you want to cache and you want to downsample. Maybe you want to even down compress or whatever. So that's a perfect edge solution. But the further kind of storage, post-processing, identifying the individual, that will all happen in the cloud, right? So you have a hybrid solution where edge and cloud actually works together. Yeah. And that's a real hybrid, as opposed to like on-prem fighting off-prem for whatever reason, right? So I think we're moving towards a real distributed hybrid cloud experience, right. um, moving forward with like edge really becoming as simple to use as the cloud. Yeah. So that most of people like are saying, ah, yeah, I need to go to the edge. Boy, can I avoid that? Yeah. Because then I, my operational model rolls back to 2010. I don't want that, right? Right. But with what we're building, we're kind of building a bridge between the original source of the data and the cloud. And that bridge is an intelligent bridge, right? So we can go and do whatever it takes there to go and ingest data and then transform that data. In many cases, it's video. Transform that data into information that I can then safely ship to the cloud yeah. whenever I have connectivity. That's exciting because it commoditizes the operation instead of, and we can now solve problems and, and yeah. find solutions. We can solve solutions. the problem instead of dealing with operational problems that we have that, all the time. Yeah, that's really exciting. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience before we uh, let you go and evangelize this experience around Cisco Live this well, week? Well, you can all help us um, further promote Great Bear. Go and reach out to uh, greatbear.app. Um, we have all the documentation online. We are in early field trials as we, we speak, right? Uh, so you can go and join the party. You can join us, helping us like further mature Great Bear and the Edge Native principles. And we would love to hear about your application, uh, the problem that you're trying to solve at the Edge, and maybe it's even a, across the Edge and, and the cloud, so that we have this true bridge between the source of the data and the final processing in the cloud. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Well, my pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for having me.